All right. Well, it's about that time. Thank you guys so much for joining me, Rachel Peters for Matt Pilates. Today, we don't need anything but ourselves, our own bodies and a mat. If you'd like a cushion or a rolled up towel to put down under your knees uh, for when we do some stuff on hands and knees, now might be the time to get ready for that um, to be prepared for the second part of class. But without further ado, let's go ahead and head over to our mats. We're going to line up that mat horizontally oriented towards your screen so you can see what I'm doing. And I'll do my best to talk you through everything as clearly as possible for those of you who haven't joined my class. If you get lost at any point, stop, don't worry about it, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and I can almost guarantee you'll be able to get yourselves back on track. So we're going to go ahead and start with our feet shoulder width apart, a little bit wider than our hips, toes pointed at a comfortable angle, either forward towards your screen or maybe slightly out to the sides if that feels better on those kneecaps. We're just going to take a couple of deep breaths here. Inhaling and exhaling. With every breath in, picture a string at the crown of your head raising you up toward the ceiling. And with every exhale, see if you can feel like you can get a little bit more grounded down into the floor, into your mat. Feel your toes pressing into your supporting surface there. We're going to take a big breath in here. And as we take those arms overhead, we'll clasp our palms and reach those hands toward the ceiling. As we exhale, the hands will stay up those shoulder blades will drop down toward the floor. And let's go ahead and take a tall side bend to each side. We'll inhale up to the top and then over toward that opposite corner. Let's do a few more to each side, feeling how that core and those side muscles kick in to help control your descent and to help raise you back up to the ceiling again. Let's take those arms down by our sides. We'll roll the shoulders back and down several times, working out some of those little crunchy spots between the shoulder blades. We're going to step our feet a little bit narrower now. We'll line them up with our hips. And from there, let's shift the body forward and back a little bit. Try to feel where your center of gravity goes over your base of support. We're going to take our hands right to our midsections and we can shift the weight toward the toes and then all the way back to the heels. See how far forward and back you can go without losing foot contact with the floor. If you take your fingertips, press them right into your midsection, you might feel some extra activation of those muscles as you hit those end ranges. We'll take ourselves right back over where the front of your ankle joint is, that very back part of your arch. We're going to take our web space between that thumb and first finger. We're going to place those right on our waistline, right above those hip bones. And now we're going to shift the weight from foot to foot. Same thing. Push the floor away with your feet. Feel with your fingertips and with your thumbs how those muscles contract and relax a little bit, almost cyclically, as you shift from side to side. And then from here, keeping that same hand position, we're gonna make little circles around our bases of support as we move toward the side and the back of each foot, forward toward the toes. You'll feel those muscles again, turn on and off. And if you switch directions, you'll feel that activation pattern change a little bit of the reverse. We're gonna make one more circle around that base of support. Then we'll come right back over the front of those ankle joints, take the hands down by the sides. We're gonna shift forward toward our toes. Shift far enough forward if you can that your heels unweight. Even just a little bit of unweighting is okay. And now keeping the weight toward the balls of the feet and toward the toes, let's rise up as tall as you can on those toes. If you're keeping the weight over the toes, you should be able to keep those ankle bones in line with each other. So they don't sickle out to the sides or collapse in toward each other. Once you're up as tall as you can get, let's take those arms, we'll shoot them straight up to the ceiling. And as your fingertips reach up, those shoulder blades will drop down to the floor, anchoring ourselves in a nice stable position over that base of support on our toes. Keeping the weight forward now, we're going to slowly bring those heels down to the mat. Take our arms down by our sides. We're going to shift our weight back over the front of that ankle joint, lift our toes up. We'll tap those toes up and down a couple times. And we'll lift them, hold them there, noticing how those arches lift up a little bit for a little more support. We're going to spread those toes apart, take the pinkies down, and then each toe in sequence, we're going to press it down to the floor, finishing up with the big toe. It's like you're drumming your fingertips on a tabletop waiting for some action to happen. Let's keep those toes moving a couple more times, warming up those little muscles in the feet. 
We'll take those toes down again. And let's soften up our knees, shake them out a little bit. We're gonna move to one edge of the mat. Keeping those feet hip width apart, we can keep those knees a little bit soft. We're gonna take our hands down toward our hips. Placing them right where your femurs fold into your pelvis. We're gonna stick that tailbone back, take the crown of the head forward. We're gonna hinge forward with a still spine, relatively still spine, relatively neutral back. So we have some curve in our neck and some curve in the lower back as well. We're gonna pause right at the point where you start to feel a little barrier to movement or a little stretch right between the back of your knees and those sit bones. And from there, we're gonna wiggle a little bit there. We'll let the knees bend slightly, keeping them behind the toes. And then we're gonna send that tailbone toward the ceiling, bend and straighten. So we're keeping that nice hinge in the hips, maybe finding as those muscles and connective tissues in the back of the thighs ease into the wiggle motion through the knees, that we might be able to take our bodies a little farther forward, maybe even toward a tabletop position with the back, because if you could balance something in the small of your back here. We're gonna pause here, take a big breath in. On the exhale, we're going to be making our way down toward hands and knees. We have a few options here. We can fold ourselves down, keeping those knees as straight or as bent as you're comfortable doing. You could walk yourself directly to hands and knees here, or we can move out toward a downward dog position. If you're on hands and knees, go ahead and get yourself situated. If you're moving through that down dog type position, we're going to line up our elbows and our ears, bending the knees as much as we need to, to get ourselves in a nice stable upper body position without stress on the back. From here, when you find that position, we're gonna pedal our feet out a little bit, dropping one heel and then dropping the other. And keep that going at your own speed. Again, if you're not feeling super happy with this position, feel free to come right down to hands and knees and wait for us there, maybe rocking back and forth. We're gonna drop both heels down to the floor here, take a big breath in. And on that exhale, we'll keep that belly drawn in gently toward the spine. We're gonna come forward, bringing our shoulders over our wrists. We can pause in this plank position, moving the weight from side to side, or we can bring the knees down to shorten that lever on your trunk and your upper body a bit. We'll take our weight side to side again for a couple more shifts. We'll come back to the middle. And now finally, we'll bring ourselves down to hands and knees if we haven't been there already. Moving through a couple of cats and cows, just to ease into that kneeling position. Feel free to put some padding under your knees if you need here. so here. We don't uh, plan on being in this position for too long right now, but we will revisit this in a little while. We're gonna come back to that neutral position and wag our tails side to side. Hip to a shoulder, other hip to the other shoulder. Maybe looking over your shoulder as we go. We're gonna take ourselves right back to the middle. The feet come together, the knees come apart. We're gonna bring the bottom down toward the heels. Again, find the range that your knees are happy with. We'll walk those hands forward toward the front of the mat, find the range that your shoulders are happy with. When we find our position here, we can drop that forehead toward the floor if you have more room, and we'll take a few breaths here. Inhaling, as we exhale, we'll let those shoulder blades wrap around the front of your body, dropping those armpits toward the floor. Let's drop those forearms to the mat. We'll shift the weight forward over the forearms and we're gonna take the legs back behind the body. You can rest on those upper thighs. And from here, we're gonna draw that belly up and away from the floor, maybe lifting up onto those thighs if your back doesn't want to be super arched right now. And then we're gonna squeeze our shoulder blades together behind the back and then press them forward toward the floor. Squeeze and press. Keeping that going at your own pace, squeezing the blades, pressing the blades. Feel free to take it through a range of motion that's working for you. We're still warming up. We're gonna press those legs to the floor and then push ourselves side to side, pushing the floor, floor away with our forearms. Let's shift one more time to each. We'll take it right back to the middle. Let's take a big breath in. On that exhale, we're gonna come down to the mat, roll to our backs and bend up those knees, lining our heels up with our sit bones. From here, we're gonna picture a clock face on the belly. 12 o'clock up high, six o'clock down toward the pubic bone, three and nine on either side. And we're gonna take that pelvis and tip it forward toward six o'clock, giving ourselves a little bit of an arch. And then we're gonna flatten that back, tip backward toward 12 o'clock. Let's find a range that's working for you. What range can you move through without pain, without strain? 
And once you figured out what that range is, we're going to tone things down a little bit. We're going to draw the chin gently toward the neck and keep rocking that pelvis. This time, if that chin's drawn down, it might tone down the range through that pelvis just a little bit. We're going to move ourselves right back to neutral where you could balance a marble in your navel and root new. And now we're going to take that pelvis from side to side, three o'clock to nine o'clock. We're letting one cheek tip down toward the floor as the other one rotates up toward the ceiling. And then we'll switch back and forth at our own speed. We're trying to keep those lower legs relatively still. Those upper thighs are going to piston and move a little bit as the pelvis goes. We're going to take ourselves right back to neutral, take a big breath in. On that exhale, we're going to draw the belly gently down toward the spine as you're tightening the little seat belt and muscles right between that belly button and the pubic bone. Holding that there, we're going to nod that chin. Again, letting the back of the neck rest down into the mat. Maintaining that nod and that abdominal contraction, we're going to lift that back of the head up off the floor just an inch or so. Take a big breath in. And then we're going to lower the head down, releasing the nod. Nod and lift. Lower and release. Keep that pattern going. If you're not comfortable lifting your head, feel free to maintain just that chin nod, pulling that chin toward the neck. And feel what it would be like. Imagine a wood, what it would feel like through the front of the neck to lift your head. All it takes is a tiny, tiny bit of unweighting in order for those muscles in the front of the throat to do some work for you. We're gonna lower the head back down one final time, maintaining that knot through the chin. We're gonna bring one knee up to 90 degrees and the other knee to meet it in tabletop. Assess your position here. You wanna make sure that belly can stay down towards your spine. If you're having trouble controlling that one foot could be down on the floor for a little kickstand. We're going to take the hands up to the thighs. If one foot's down, the hands will both come to the thigh that's lifted. And from here, we're gently going to press our hands and our thighs toward each other, building some pressure until you feel some work done between those lowest ribs and that pubic bone. We're going to hold that there and drop the shoulder blades towards your hips. From here, let's wiggle those knees. We're going to straighten them up, bring the feet toward the ceiling. We'll bend them back down for a tabletop. Straighten and bend at your own speed here. Finding the range you can move through where you feel like you can bring those knees straight as you can without that pelvis changing positions. We're going to pause wherever that first barrier is and hold it. And then from there, maybe we take them and straighten them a little farther. Go by how you feel, go by the lengthening here and by keeping that back free of strain. With the belly drawn down and the hands hovered up off the mat by your trunk. We're going to pat the hands up and down like we're bouncing little tiny basketballs. We'll inhale five, four, three, two, one, and exhale five, four, three, two, one. Keep that pattern going. Five breaths of inhale, five breaths of outhale, five seconds each. Good. Keep that going. You're welcome to have your head lifted with that chin knotted or to keep the head on the mat maintaining that chin nod. To progress, we take those legs out in front of us. We inhale two, three, four, five, and exhale two, three, four, five. Keep it going. Remember, you could have a kickstand on the floor. We're going to switch our hand position, press those palms up toward the ceiling, breathing in two, three, four, five, and out two, three, four, five. Let's take two more big inhales. We'll exhale. Last time, inhale. Breathe it out, two, three, four, five. Pause wherever you are. We're gonna bring those knees to tabletop or tabletop with the foot down for a kickstand. We'll lower the upper body down and then holding ourselves up in that tabletop position, we're gonna lower our hands to the floor with those palms still facing up toward the ceiling. So we can focus on lengthening out through those collarbones, bringing them wide and away from the center of the body. Hold it here. We're gonna reset that belly to spine. We're going to keep that leg farthest from your screen, bent to tabletop, and that opposite leg is going to stretch out in front of you. Inhale, pull it back to tabletop. Exhale, switch. Keep that pattern going. Starting here with a stretch of that straight leg out toward where the wall and the ceiling meet in front of you. Progressing, if you'd like, by bringing that leg closer to the wall in front of you, kind of in the middle, or Covering it fairly up off the floor as we go. We're going to do one more here on each side, stretching them out straight. We're going to pull those knees back to tabletop. 
And then we're gonna pull the leg farthest from your screen all the way into your chest and straighten that opposite leg out in front of you. We'll give it a hug, roll those shoulders back and down. And then let's take that bent knee and we'll wiggle it across the body just a little bit. Let's pull it back to the center, holding it there. Nod the chin with the belly drawn down. Maybe we lift the head up. Hold it there. Let's lift that straight leg up off the floor, whether your head's up or down. And let's make some circles on the wall in front of it with that leg. We're stretching your knee as close to your nose as you can get it. And that opposite foot is stretching out in front of you as close to that wall as you can get it. Let's circle that leg in the other direction. Keep it going. The big goal is to keep that leg moving independently of your trunk. The trunk stays nice and still. Now we're going to take that straight leg and stretch it side to side towards your screen and toward the opposite wall. Nice long stretch through that leg. Again, the head could come down if it's fatiguing. If your neck is starting to fatigue. We're going to stretch that leg forward, hold it there, maybe keeping it hovered off the floor, and we're going to switch our grip. We're going to take that opposite leg that was bent and stretch it up to the ceiling, getting into that hamstring. Again, find your barrier. You're welcome to flex and point. We're going to make a few circles just to get into that connective tissue all the way through that lower leg. We'll point that leg to the ceiling again. With that belly drawn down, we're going to take our arms to the ceiling. We're going to hold that leg nice and still now, and we're going to arc the arms back toward the wall behind you. We'll arc them up to the ceiling and down in front. Let's keep that arc going, maintaining that active stretch through that leg that's reaching toward the ceiling. Let's do two more here, back and forth. But with that shoulder, if you feel any strain in the tops of your shoulders, you're certainly welcome to modify your range based on how you're feeling. We're now going to pause with those arms up to the ceiling. And if that outstretched leg needs a little bit of a breather, feel free to bend the knee and put it on the floor or to stretch that leg straight down to the mat. We're going to take that leg that's up at the ceiling we're going to move it side to side while keeping the pelvis nice and still. Those shoulder blades are anchored to the floor. The back of the pelvis is anchored to the floor. Keep that going. You certainly could take your arms back overhead for a little bit more challenge to your trunk. You could bring them down by your sides to give you a little more support. And we can make some circles. And again, feel free to play around with that arm position. We'll circle the other way. Let's hold that leg up at the top. We're going to hold on behind that thigh again. With that other leg straight, we're going to keep that leg down on the floor versus having it hovered now. We'll take a big breath in. Exhale, draw that belly down. We're going to kick the leg into your palms, maybe letting the upper body come up just a few inches, and then take it back down. Kick into the leg, we'll rock up, and take it back down. Your body's almost going to be like a little Rocking horse or teeter totter. You're welcome to lift your other leg off the mat and kind of rock back and forth here a little bit. That belly stays drawn down. We're going to lower ourselves down, pull that knee back into the chest, and we're going to switch it up and do the same series on our other side. So we'll pull that knee closest to your screen in. We'll draw that opposite leg down, pressing it into the mat, and then we'll take that bent knee and now gently wiggle it across the body. Opening up that hip, maybe getting a little bit of movement through that lumbar spine, but you want to feel most of this right in that hip. We'll take it right back to the middle. We'll hold on to our shin with soft elbows. Maybe we nod and lift the head, bringing the nose towards your knee. Maybe that head stays down with the chin nod. We're going to hover that other leg up off the floor and hold it there, and we'll circle it, keeping the rest of the body nice and still. Good. Stretch that foot forward. We'll circle the other way. Keep those shoulders back and down. We'll stretch that leg forward. And now that leg's going to go side to side. Good. Keep drawing that belly down. If you want to have your hand on the hip, on the side of the moving leg, just to monitor that that pelvis is staying still, feel free to do so. We'll stretch that leg forward and keeping it hovered up there, we're going to bring the upper body down. Switch our grip holding on behind that thigh and we'll stretch that leg up to the ceiling, maybe wiggling through it a bit to find that hamstring position, hamstring stretch position. We could flex and point that foot. We could move it in some circles, getting into the connective tissue. 
bend your knee if you start feeling any numbness or tingling or pulling that isn't so pleasant in that lower leg. We're gonna hold that leg up there, keeping the belly drawn down and that opposite leg covered up. We'll take our arms to the ceiling. And then let's work through those arm arcs. We'll take them back overhead, up to the ceiling and down to the floor. Again, you choose the path and the range that you move through. If you feel better just holding this position and breathing with the arms by your sides or up toward the ceiling, you're absolutely welcome to do that. Let's take them back one more time if you didn't move enough. And we'll take them up to the ceiling, hold them there and drop those blades down. And let's take that top leg side to side. Again, remember that hovered leg could be resting on the floor. It could be bent with that foot on the floor. It's up to you. Let's go ahead and make some circles with that moving leg. You're welcome again to take those arms back a bit, to take them down to the floor in front of you. We'll circle the other way. Find that position that's working you through a challenge, but a doable challenge. We'll bring that leg to the ceiling, hold it there. We're gonna take the hands right behind that other thigh. We'll drop those shoulders back and down again. Take a big breath in. On that exhale, we'll kick those, that leg into your hands. Curl it up and draw it back down. And as always, you're welcome to leave your upper body on the floor and simply work through kicking that leg through the back of the hands. We could rock into our little teeter-totter motion. If you want to play around with that little rocking horse motion, we're going to draw ourselves all the way down. We'll reset those shoulders down by the sides. We're going to keep those elbows soft, hanging on by the calf, by the upper thigh, maybe bending the knee if, knee if you feel like you need to. And we're going to roll the upper body up if you wish. We're going to move through some straight single leg stretches here, alternating. We'll lower one down, pulsing the other one toward us, and switch it up. Keep that going. If your knees are bent, it could look like this. The head could be down, we could be marching, the belly's staying in. The last option would be to move back to a supported march, either with that leg straight or with it bent. We'll do one more to each side. We're gonna pull both knees into the chest, roll that upper body down if it's been up, and let's look side to side. Taking everything back to the middle, we'll roll those shoulders back and down again. We'll drop those arms to the mat. We'll bring those knees to tables up. And then maybe with vertical thighs, maybe we can straighten those legs all the way to the ceiling again. From here, toes are pointed or flexed, whatever's working for you. We're gonna make some small flutter kicks in this position. Belly stays down. We can hover the hands up off the floor for a little bit of a challenge. We could straighten those legs out toward the wall in front of us, keeping that belly down as we continue to flutter those legs. We could bring the arms up to the ceiling as we flutter those legs. Let's do one more set here, varying that hip angle as you see fit, maybe keeping those hips nice and still and just flutter kicking our legs. We're gonna pause those feet and we're gonna move both legs side to side together. We're dropping those blades down, keeping the lowest ribs down, but letting the pelvis rock a little bit. So as you move away from your, Screen, that side of your pelvis close to the screen can come up a little bit. Let's take them back to the middle. We're gonna make some clockwise circles. Again, if the pelvis comes off the mat a little bit, that's okay. We're gonna circle the other way. Here's three, two, one. If your knees are bent, we're doing the same circle with a shorter lever. We're gonna take those legs back to the middle. We'll circle them on opposite directions of each other now. Let's take those hands down to the sides. Maybe that lets you make those circles a little bit bigger. If your knees are bent, it's almost gonna feel like a partial breaststroke kick. We can circle the other way. Again, knees bent or knees straight. We'll do two more here. We're gonna pause with those legs toward the ceiling, bent or straight, and we're gonna turn our heels together and the toes out. We'll flex the feet this time. So we're in kind of a ballet first position. From here, we're gonna keep those heels together. Bend up your knees. Inhaling, pulling the belly in as we draw those heels in a little closer to our body. On the exhale, we're gonna to press to the ceiling, straightening out those knees. Inhale, bend, exhale, press. 
Let's move through this frog position at your own speed. You're welcome to progress this by pressing those legs straighter out toward the wall in front of you, opening up that angle through your trunk. Inhale in, exhale press. One more time here, inhale in, exhale press. We're gonna pull them into the chest again, hug them nice and tight and rock the body side to side. You're welcome to grab on above your kneecaps and maybe stir those legs in their sockets a little bit. Let those thighs release. Coming right back to tabletop, we're gonna bring our hands down by the sides and flex our feet. Once that belly is drawn in, we can take the arms to the ceiling. From here, we take a big breath in, letting those heels come down to the floor. And then we exhale them up. Now take an inhale to prepare. Exhale, lower those heels to the floor. And inhale them up. Pick the breathing pattern that works best for you, making sure you take a breath with every lowering and lifting. It's up to you whether you inhale at the top or the bottom of the motion. And you can progress this by taking those arms back as the heels come forward and then pulling them back up to tabletop. Keep it going, whether the hands are down or lifted up. If you want a final progression, those legs could be straightened toward the ceiling and we open the arms back and the legs forward simultaneously. We're gonna do two more here. Lifting up, lowering and opening, lifting up. We'll pull back to tabletop. And now that arm closest to your screen comes back overhead, opposite leg stretches forward. We'll move through a few diagonal stretches here, bringing your overhead arm as far away from your outstretched leg as you can get it. Stretch and stretch. Last two. Last one. Let's pull everything into the chest. We'll rock them side to side. Coming right back to the middle. We'll roll those shoulders back and down. Take the arms to your sides. Then we'll take both feet down to the floor. Let's bring our feet and knees together and just gently rock them side to side. We're keeping those little rotating muscles right along your spine active, but also letting the muscles in the low back relax for a minute before we move on. We'll come right back to the center. We're gonna inch those feet a little bit apart. They're gonna be lined up with your knees and with your sit bones. We're gonna press those arms into the floor. Take a big breath in. And as we exhale, we're gonna press your heels into the floor. Lift that bottom up into bridge. Find the top of your motion. That's wherever, as high as you can lift without getting back strain until you feel that stopping point. The stopping point can either because those glutes, because those glutes can't contract any further or because you feel an opening and a stretch through the front of the thighs. Let's take a big breath in at the top. We'll exhale, lowering back down to the floor. Let's take it up and down at your own speed, driving that motion by pressing your heels into the floor. Keep it going. The more you can use your heels versus the rest of the foot, the more active your glutes are gonna be and the less likely those hamstrings are to cramp up. We're gonna hold that next bridge up at the top and we're gonna move through rotation. That hip closest to your screen is gonna lower down as the other one stays still. We'll raise it up toward the top again and switch sides. Let's go ahead and move through here at your own pace. Potentially progressing by lifting into a march. Pick your level, it's completely up to you. If you need a little assistance, you can bring your bottom down a little bit farther, a little closer to the floor to give those glutes a little bit more room to work as we march the leg. We could stretch a leg up to the ceiling as we march it. We could also add lowering and lifting of that moving leg as we keep that pelvis nice and level. We're gonna do one more on each side, whether you're rotating bent knee marching or moving through a straight leg lift with lowering. We'll press that second foot into the floor, lift up half an inch higher, take a big breath in. And on that exhale, we'll lower the body back down on the mat. And let's move through our pelvic clock. We'll go 12 to six, getting a little arch, a little flattening. Take some big deep breaths here, let everything reset. We'll come back to neutral and now we'll move that pelvis from three to nine. Rotating from side to side. 
You can use your feet to control that motion, pressing the foot you're moving away from a little more firmly into the floor. We'll take it right back to the middle, keeping that belly drawn in. We're gonna cross the leg closest to your screen over and place that heel on your opposite knee. We can press that heel into the outside of the opposite knee just to get a little more stability through the pelvis. We're gonna move through single leg bridges. So if you want that leg resting on the other one, you're welcome to leave it there as we take it up and down. You're also welcome to move that leg, free leg up into tabletop. You're welcome to take it up to the ceiling or you're welcome to line it up with your other thigh. Feel free to play around with any of those iterations and decide what's giving you the best challenge that you need right now. We'll do one last bridge on this side. We'll lower it back down, take that opposite foot to the floor. That far leg's gonna cross. We'll take our ankle to the outside of that near knee. We'll assess whether we wanna use that foot for a little more stability as we press up into our single leg bridge. We can move to tabletop, up to the ceiling or forward and take that side up and down. Again, remember this is always at your own speed. It's your choice to make a progression or a modification. You could always modify by going back to bridge with rotation or a double leg bridge. We're still working the same muscles. We're gonna do one more here. We'll lower that hip down. We're gonna cross that free leg over the other one. Pull them both into the chest if you have the range to do that. Otherwise, one foot stays down. We can rock side to side, easing into that hip rotator farthest away from your screen. And we're gonna go ahead and unwind, move it to the other side. Again, pulling in if you wish, keeping that foot on the floor if it feels better that way. We'll take it right back to the middle. We're gonna unwind, give those knees one final hug into the chest. And then we'll take our legs and straighten them out along the floor. Once you're there, hands come down to the mat, reassess everything, wiggle down into the floor a bit. And if you need to bend your knees up to take some pressure off your back, you're welcome to do so. And we'll take those arms right to the ceiling with your palms facing in on each other. And from here, keeping everything else nice and still, we're gonna take those shoulder blades, wrap them around the front of the body, reach those hands to the ceiling. We'll lower those blades down to the floor. Reach and lower, reach and lower. Keep that going. Reach and lower, reach and lower. We're gonna anchor those blades down and now we'll take those arms part way back behind you. Reach them up to where the wall and the ceiling meet behind you. And with those hands staying nice and still, again, we'll reach those shoulder blades up to the ceiling and down to the floor. This time they're rotating a bit. They're moving around the top, almost around the tops of your shoulders. Reach them up, drop them down. Again, we'll take those arms back a little farther overhead, stopping short of having your thumbs on the floor. If they do reach all the way, just lift them up an inch or so. And again, one final set, we'll bring those blades up to the ceiling, down to the floor. It's quite a bit less motion than it was with your arms reaching up toward the ceiling. So be aware of that. Don't worry too much about how much motion you have. You wanna feel some muscles working here as those shoulder blades move. We're gonna drop everything down to the mat. Hands will stay just hovered off the floor. We're gonna draw the chin down toward the neck. Drop that breastbone down slightly to the floor. Take your lowest ribs down and that belly button down, hold them there. And if you wanna add some complexity to this, we keep those connections. Keep that middle back resting on the floor and that belly down. We're gonna lift a foot up and down and then the other foot up and down. And we'll walk it out at a speed that's working for you. Keep it going. You're welcome to bring those hands up to the ceiling. Feel the different challenges on your trunk when your arms are back overhead versus up to the ceiling. We're going for stability through that pelvis. If you had something balanced in your belly button, little marble there, it wouldn't rock to either side. With those hands resting on the hips, we'll do a few more lifts on each side. We'll bring that second foot down, take a big breath in, taking those arms back overhead one more time through whatever range is working for you, big breath. And on that exhale, we'll bring those arms down and roll over to our bellies. 
Now you always have the option here, if being on your belly doesn't feel super great like this, feel free to grab a pillow or a cushion or something small that you could rest just above your pelvis to keep that back in a little bit flatter of a position versus letting it arch, that's up to you. You can also take your feet and bring them slightly apart from each other. We're gonna rest that forehead on your hands. Big breath in, exhaling, draw your belly up and away from the floor. We're gonna squeeze the bottom, flutter kick those legs. Keep that going. Keep them moving through a range where you can keep that belly lifted. Sometimes getting them farther apart can be helpful. Keeping that belly in, we're gonna take our arms back by our sides and flip those palms so they face the floor. Hold them there. Keeping that belly in, if you wanna add a little bit of upper back extension, you can drive your fingertips down towards your feet and think about sending your breastbone slightly up like it's gonna be pointing toward the front of your mat. That belly staying in will keep your low back nice and supported as that upper back extends. But if this doesn't feel good on your mid back or low back, bring your face down. We're gonna pause those legs. Now we're gonna click the heels together. Click, 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 click. We'll pause it again. Maybe we take those arms out in front into a Y shape and move into a swim. Keep it going. Those hands could always be down by your forehead. They can always be back by your sides again. It's up to you. We'll do three, two, one. Pause your legs, bring them back down to the floor. That belly stays drawn up and in. The hands are gonna come down by the sides with those palms facing the floor. And now we're gonna squeeze the hands back behind the body, squeezing those blades together. We're gonna hold the squeeze and pulse the hands up for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, hold it there, big breath in. And on that exhale, we'll take our hands right below our shoulders, push ourselves up to our hands and knees. And now might be the time if you need a little extra padding under your knees, feel free to fold your mat up, find a rolled towel, or put that little pillow or cushion under those knees. We'll do a couple of cats and cows, easing back into our hands and knee position. We haven't been here since warm up. We'll come back to neutral. Holding this here, let's go ahead and squeeze your shoulder blades together behind the back and then unsqueeze them, press them forward toward the floor. Squeeze together, press them apart. Keep that going. This is like a little mini push up just for those shoulder blades. Those elbows are going to stay nice and still as the blades do that motion. You can test how comfy your neck is in this position by gently looking side to side. See how that feels. We'll squeeze and press again. If you want to challenge it further, we can go up to one side, take the opposite hand to your thigh, and we can squeeze and press on that single arm. We're trying to keep your shoulders level as we go, really feeling that work underneath that arm, the armpit on your supporting arm. Let's switch the arms. If you've been doing double, keep it going. We're working on endurance of those shoulder blade muscles. We'll squeeze and press. Let's do two more here. Good, press it up, take that second hand back down. And then from here, we're gonna thread the needle. That arm farthest from your screen is gonna come up out to the side. We'll follow it with your head and then let's sweep it down and through, reaching toward that screen. Inhale up and out, exhale, thread it through. Inhale up and out, exhale, thread. One more time here, inhale up and out, pressing through the heel of that supporting hand. Exhale and thread, we'll come back up to hands and knees, reset. And let's move that arm closest to your screen, out toward that screen, toward the ceiling. Exhaling, we'll thread it. Inhale up and out, exhale, thread. Two more here, and thread. One more time, thread it through. Let's take it back up to hands and knees. We'll hold it here. And now think of balancing something right in the small of your back. And we're gonna rock the bottom back toward the heels. And then we're gonna rock ourselves back up to that all fours position. Down and up at your own speed, pressing the floor away with the heels of your hands and then pulling the heels of your hands towards your knees. We're gonna come up to all fours and we're gonna shift the weight side to side. You are welcome to come back up into our plank position if you want to make that one a little more challenging for your core or those shoulder blades. 
We'll take it back to the center. If you're in plank, you're also welcome always to drop your heels toward the wall behind you and then move to a little bit of point, point and flex, point and flex. We're gonna take those knees back down and we're gonna bring the arm farthest from your screen out in front and then your leg back behind you, keeping whatever object you have balanced in the small of your back, nice and still. If you're practicing these on your own at some point, you're also welcome to put a foam roller or a dowel horizontally across your back and challenge your ability to control against rotation and twisting by trying to keep that object balanced as you move. We can keep this going or we could move to a high plank and take a leg and the opposite arm and lift them up. Again, same goal. Keep that trunk and pelvis nice and still as those arms and legs move. We'll come back down, all fours, whether we were up on plank or not. We're gonna go ahead and bring the feet together and the knees apart. We'll take that bottom down as far as it's comfortable to do so. We'll take those hands forward toward the front of your mat and drop that forehead down. Big breath in, big breath out. We're gonna walk our hands away from your screen, taking one on top of the other for another breath in. Exhaling, we'll go ahead and walk in the other direction. We'll take a big breath in here. Exhaling, we'll walk them back to the middle of your mat. We're gonna drop those forearms just like we did at the beginning of class. Shift the body weight forward, and we're gonna hold it here. We're gonna line up those shins so they're parallel with each other. That leg closest to your screen is gonna straighten out, and we'll lift it up and down. Try to get that motion going just through that hip joint, keeping the trunk and pelvis as still as you can. We'll lift that leg up and then we'll slide that leg toward the screen and away, side to side. Feel how a little extra pressure through that near supporting forearm can help keep you lined up. We'll bend that back knee and we'll take that knee down and up, keeping it bent. Flex your foot, press that heel toward the ceiling. Last time, we'll press it up and we're gonna pulse here for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's take that leg down and we'll stretch that far leg out behind you. Again, setting everything up nice and still. That leg comes up and down. Again, you can press the forearm on the side of the leg that's moving a little more firmly into the mat for a little extra stability. It's not cheating. Hold it up there, take that straight leg side to side, away from the screen, toward the screen. We'll stretch that leg back behind the body, bend that knee and flex the foot, and that knee comes down and we control it back up. Lower and lift, lower, lift, lower, and pulse for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's take that leg back down. We're gonna keep our weight over the forearms. We're gonna come back into a plank on the knees, a forearm plank on the knees. We're gonna shift the weight side to side. That belly draws up and your back of your head, your middle back and that sacrum, the top part of the spine between your two pelvic bones are gonna be level with each other. We can turn the toes under and come into a full forearm plank and we'll shift again for four, three, two, one. Let's take those knees back down. We'll move back into one more child's pose, knees together or apart, whatever feels best to you. We'll take one more big breath here and exhale. And we're gonna make our way up to a long sitting position. So we're gonna get those legs out in front of us. Now from here, assess how mobile the backs of your legs are feeling. If you feel like you've got a decent amount of length through them now, you're welcome to straighten them out into a narrow V. And from here, we're gonna take those arms up parallel to the ground, okay? You could always have those knees a little bit bent. We're gonna hinge. We'll take those hands, reach them forward toward the wall in front of you, and then come back upright. So we're moving from those hips, keeping the back as still as we can. Try a few hinges in that narrow V. And if you wanna change it up a little, we can take those feet a little bit wider from each other. So the, the heels will be about a foot, foot and a half away from the outer edges of your mat. And again, we can hinge. Hinge it forward, take it up. You may get an inner thigh stretch here. Again, those knees are welcome to bend. 
and you move up through a range that does not pull on your back. You want to feel this in those legs. You come up nice and tall. Pick your B position that's working best for you, and we're going to widen those arms so your fingertips are lined up with the middle of your feet. We'll hinge again, and then take your hands down to your legs, wherever they land, at a position where you can get that belly drawn in. We're going to sweep the hands closest to the, the leg closest to your screen, and then open that arm out to the side. And we're going to move through to the other side. Move at your own pace. You are welcome to keep your breastbone facing that leg you're moving toward and just take that arm out to the side. You also can send that, that breastbone a little farther if you wanted to incorporate a little rotation. Let's come back and forth, moving through at your own speed. Let's go ahead and take everything back to that near side, opening it up one last time. We'll take them back to the middle, come up nice and tall. We'll bring those knees together, bend them up a little, and we'll hold on behind those thighs. We're gonna lean back until your upper body and trunk are at a little bit of an angle. We're gonna flex and point those toes. If you flex firmly, flex firmly enough, you should be able to get enough momentum and maybe even lift those heels up off the mat. You wanna feel stable on your mat though. If you have a, enough of a cushion that if you topple over backwards, you don't wanna hurt yourself really important here. If you're not stable like that, we'll stay with that bending and straightening of the toes. We're going to flex the feet and hold it there. Keep that belly drawn down. We're going to lean back a little bit. Belly draws down. We're going to take the hands to the outsides of the thighs and we're going to press the arms into your thighs. Hold them there. We're going to take one arm, open it up towards your screen, take it back to the middle and switch it up in the center. And switch, center, and switch, and center. We're going to keep the hands pressed into the knees, and we're going to lift one leg up and down. Feet could be flexed, feet could be pointed here. It's up to you. That belly's staying drawn in. We could take your hands away from your legs to progress. We could alternate them, taking one down as the other comes up. We could move those arms up till they're parallel with those straight legs. We could finally move both legs together through whatever range is working for you. We're going to do two more straightening, two more bending. Our range at your level. We're going to take those feet back down, pull ourselves back up tall. We go through a couple of seated cat cows, pelvic tilts here. We'll come up tall again and take those hands behind your body. We're going to straighten out those elbows. Find that fingertip position, forward, side, this or back. That's working best for you. With straight elbows, we're going to squeeze those blades back behind the body, sending the breastbone toward the wall in front of you. Maybe inching that bottom forward a little. And we're going to straighten the legs up. Hold it here, pressing the heels of the hands into the mat and taking that breastbone up toward the corner in front of you. We can hold here or we can move through some reverse planks. This is going to work the hamstrings and the glutes a bit here, keeping those knees nice and straight, pressing the heels, lifting the bottom, and we'll lower ourselves back down. Keep those shoulders away from your ears. Lift and lower. Feel free to just think about unweighting the bottom if you do want to try a little bit of motion. And if you want to take it farther when you're up at the top, you could march. Lift a leg up and down. We'll bring the feet down, lift the bottom up one more time. We'll lower it down. Shake out those wrists. Be nice room. They just worked hard. And we'll turn ourselves facing the screen. Cross leg sitting, legs in front, or if neither of those feel good, feel free to grab a sofa cushion. Sit up on that sofa cushion so your bottom's higher than your legs. And we'll stay up nice and tall, taking those arms out to the side. We'll side bend. Take it up and over to one. Up and over to the other. Keep that side bend going. I'm going to check our chat and just make sure that my connection is going okay. Oh, great. Thank you, Melissa, for coming. All right. We're going to keep that side to side going. We're going to come up nice and tall. And with those hands up parallel, or arms up parallel to the ground, we're going to squeeze the blades and pulls for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, hold it there for a big breath in. On that exhale, we'll take those hands down, roll the shoulders back and down a bit. 
And then we're going to make our way up to our knees. Again, if you need more padding, feel free to roll your mat up a bit, add a cushion, add a towel, whatever's working best. We're going to bring those arms up to the ceiling. And as your fingertips come up, we'll drop those blades down. And let's take another few tall side bends. There wasn't much wind today, but usually we have a few trees in our backyard that we see swaying in the breeze, and this always makes me think of them. We'll go one more time to the other side, then take ourselves up nice and tall. We're going to take those arms forward and lean back until you feel the front of the thighs working just a bit. Let's open up one arm to the side, pop it over, take it back to the middle, and then we'll switch it up. Let's keep it going. Open and center. And open and center. We'll come up nice and tall. Arms come down. We're going to flip those palms so they face forward. And then keeping the shoulders down, we're going to take those arms back behind the body slightly. And we'll pulse the pinkies together and squeeze them there for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold. Big breath in. And on that exhale, we're going to take one leg and straighten it out. Try to get the whole foot on the floor. If it doesn't work, feel free to turn your toes out to the side or just do your best. We're going to feel a little lengthening opening through that thigh. If this doesn't feel good, you're welcome to stay down onto a sitting, a sitting position with one leg outstretched as well. We'll take our hands to our hips. If we're in kneeling, we're going to hinge forward, taking the crown of the head forward and the tailbone back. If you're seated, you're just going to do a little hip hinge like we did in our V when we were facing the side. We'll hinge and take it up. Two more here. And lift. Last time, hinge it forward. We'll take it up, take those arms to the side, and we're gonna side bend toward our bent knee, toward our straight leg. Keep that going. You're also welcome to lift a leg as we move away from that straight leg. You can just unweight it. Okay, let's do one more here. We'll come up nice and tall and we'll switch. If you're seated, sit on that other cheek with that knee bent. We'll straighten out that opposite leg, getting that inner thigh stretch. Coming up nice and tall. We'll go ahead and hinge, whether you're kneeling or seated. Crown of the head forward. Come up nice and tall. Crown of the head forward. Let's do two more here. Last, come up tall, arms out to the side, and we'll side bend toward the bent leg, up and over toward the straight. Let's side bend. Take it up. Last time, side bend. Take it up tall. We'll come back down to kneeling, and then we're going to make our way down to our forearm. That upper arm is gonna be vertical. We're gonna go ahead and bend our knees, lining our heels up with our sit bones. And that arm comes down, resting on your trunk with your hand in line with your heel, okay? So we're gonna hunch our shoulder toward our ears, and then we're not gonna do that anymore. We're gonna press away and hold it there with that rib cage lifted. Maybe the arm stays down, maybe it comes up. We're gonna come up and down to a modified side plank. Lift and lower. Let's do a couple more here. We're going to hold that next one there, and we're going to take that top knee up and down. Now, if lifting the side of the body up doesn't feel great, you're welcome to have that top hip down. It just limits how far that top leg will be able to move. We're going to do two more knee lifts here. Second knee down, maintaining that hip lift or with the hip down, we're going to take that top arm forward to the floor and lift it back up. There's two, three, one more time. Lift that arm up, we'll bring the side body down, and we're gonna switch. Let's come around, we'll bring that other forearm to the floor. Upper arm is vertical, knees are bent, heels lined up with your bottom. We find a hand position, that arm can be by your side or lifted. We squeeze and then unshrug that shoulder, we come up into our modified side plank and we lower down. Play around with this a little 
Let's see how it feels to unweight your pelvis on that side. If it doesn't feel great, that hip stays down. Otherwise, we keep the feet together, take that top knee up with a lifted hip. And again, if that other side hip is down on the mat, remember that knee won't go up as high, that's okay. We'll do two more here. We'll bring that knee down, and now we take that top arm forward to the floor and lift it back up. Last three. Last two. Last one. Lift it up. Lower the body down. We're going to go ahead and come down all the way onto our backs. We're going to bend with those knees. Bring your feet and your knees together. And we're going to bring those arms out on a T with the palms facing the ceiling, or with the arms down a little closer to your side, so like a low upside down V position. And from here, we're going to rock our knees side to side, keeping the feet and knees together. Find a comfortable range. Maybe you feel your trunk working a little bit to help control that side to side motion with your legs. We'll take them right back to the middle. We're going to cross one knee over the other. We can either push that leg out to the side, pushing from the thigh above the knee, or we can keep those knees in and pull them into your chest. Maybe we rock side to side. When you're ready, we'll go ahead and unwind. Other foot comes down, cross one leg over, maybe pressing out to the side, maybe crossing them over, pulling them in, hold it there, rock them side to side. Take them back to the middle, we'll unwind, pulling both knees into the chest one more time. We'll bring our feet down, we can turn over, we're going to make our way to our feet, you're welcome to come through. Cat and cow, a couple times. If we're here, we could come through a plank, maybe adding a push up if you're feeling inclined. We can come up with the tailbone to the ceiling through our down dog position, dropping those heels, maybe pedaling them out a little bit to get into those calves and get into those hamstrings. Again, you find what's working best for you right now. We'll drop the heels down, take an inhale. And then as we breathe out, let's walk those feet toward our hands. Draw the belly slightly up and in, and we'll make our way up to standing. We finish up with a little balance work. So if you want the wall or a chair next to you for a little balance assist, feel free to go grab it. We're gonna line up our feet with our hips. We'll stand up nice and tall. We're gonna revisit that balance work we did at the very beginning of class, getting our center of gravity right over the front of our ankle joints. This time, once we're there, we'll lift the toes up, feeling the arches lift. We'll spread them apart and take them down one at a time. Hands come right to the midsection and let's shift. We'll go forward toward the toes, backward toward the heels. I know everybody worked really hard today. Thank you so much. Let's take it back over our feet. We'll shift the weight side to side. Hopefully you feel a little taller standing here after having done the hour of work. We'll make some little circles around our base of support. And we'll do the same thing going the other way. All right, coming right back to the center, we'll shake our legs out a little bit. And let's go ahead and stand heel to toe. Again, feel free to grab your balance prop if you need something to hang on to. Standing heel to toe like we're about to walk a tightrope. We can hold here. If you want to take it further, Flip side to side. Taking it back to the middle. Let's go ahead and switch. Opposite foot in front. And if you're ready, you can take it side to side. And then looking back to the middle, we'll go ahead and take our feet apart from each other. Shift the weight to one foot, taking the opposite leg up. Hold it here. Maybe we go up and down on our toes a bit, shifting the weight over the ball of the foot before lifting the fiddle up. Let's go ahead and switch. Let's shift to that other foot. Lift that opposite knee up. Hold in there. Maybe we take it up and down. Ah, maybe we fall over, maybe we don't. Always worth trying again. 
All right, let's take those feet down. We'll shake our knees out. And then once we're there, let's get those feet a little wider than our shoulders. We'll take a big breath in and a big breath out, arms down. Let's take a big breath in. We'll clasp those palms at the top, reaching into the ceiling. And we'll drop our blades down. And let's take a tall side bend to each side, arcing those hands up and over before reaching into the other side. Let's do a couple more here. Focusing on reaching up, staying tall as we come to the other side. We'll reach those arms to the ceiling. We'll take them down by the sides with the feet together. And let's take one more big breath in. Palms come together and then into the center. And I am as always thankful that you guys joined me today. Please feel free to email with questions, concerns, comments, and suggestions. Um, I'm happy to try to address as much as I can. Rachel, R-A-C-H-E-L, at agilept.com. Hope you all really have a wonderful rest of your day and see you soon. Thanks so much for coming.